Today we'll be recreating planet Earth by simulating everything from plate tectonics to climate in order to create a truly accurate Earth-like planet generator. After scrolling through dozens of ways to display a sphere, I settled for this approach and don't worry, we're not making Minecraft 2.0. This will just let me separate the world into chunks at some point in the future, but for now we can just move all the points so that they are the same distance from the center of the world and we have a nice little sphere. And now that I can put textures onto it, we can move on to simulating the tectonic plates. As we can see from Earth's plate map, there are a bunch of larger plates that are the continents and some smaller plates. I decided to simulate this by generating some evenly distributed points, moving them around a bit to add variety and then assigning some of them to be the small plates. Then I choose the center points of the major plates and assign all remaining points to the closest center of a plate. This is how that looks when we color the sphere to show where the tectonic plates are. But I don't like that some of the minor plates are completely inside of the major ones which doesn't happen on Earth. I solved that by switching the minor plates to spawn after the major ones and only on their edges. And now we can move on to generating the continents. We use Perlin noise to assign a random value between 0 and 1 to each point on our sphere. The advantage of Perlin noise over something like white noise is that the values transition smoothly. Now we can choose a cutoff, for example 0.5, and every point that has value above that will be land. Now, instead of straight up slapping the noise onto the sphere, we can sample a different part of the noise map for each the tectonic plate. This should lead to the continents taking a shape more similar to our tectonic plates. This doesn't look good right now because the edges are too rough, so I made an edge detection algorithm which allows me to smooth the transitions and now the continents look a lot more natural. We can then set the distance of the point from the center based on the noise value. Well, maybe a bit less extreme. We can choose different water cutoff levels to create something like an island planet, but for now we will set the values somewhere in the middle and focus on improving our noise function. Instead of just using one noise map to calculate our terrain, we can layer multiple layers or octaves on top of each other. Each subsequent octave gets more detailed but has a smaller influence on the final terrain. Adding four octaves to our planet, we get some very nice looking continents. However, now our terrain is more detailed than our planet mesh, so the image is pixelized. But this is something I'll address in a future video in this six-part series, since it requires a lot of work. But for now, to make the terrain look more natural, only very high points will actually show up as bumps in the terrain. Now we will use our plate tectonics to accurately generate mountains. There are three main types of tectonic plate boundaries. Convergent, which occur when plates crash head-on into each other, and this forms mountains and trenches. Divergent, where the plates move apart and this releases magma from the core and creates volcanoes. And finally, Transform, where the plates slide past each other and cause earthquakes, which we will disregard for now. Here I have assigned a random move direction to each plate and tried to visualize it, but the colors don't really mean much. I'm trying to detect the stress level of each point to see what kind of plate boundary it is, but I'm really struggling with making a smooth function. Okay, this is looking a bit better, but I'm still getting some areas with sudden changes. One eternity later. I finally made this smooth function, and here I visualize the convergent plates as yellow and divergent as blue. We can just add that data to our noise value to get realistically placed mountain ranges. Here I made the mountains a different color, and now we're getting some very nice looking terrain. Now it's time for climate simulation. The two main factors that affect Earth's biomes are temperature and precipitation aka the amount of rainfall. I will simulate both of these separately and then combine them to choose the best biome for each point on our planet. Temperature is mostly defined by the latitude, which is the distance from the equator. So I made a quick script which calculates this and makes the temperature fall off the closer we are to the poles. We can also change the tilt of our planet since Earth isn't actually straight up but rotates at about 23 degrees off. I also added the ability to change the strength of the sun so planets further away get colder climates and closer ones become desert planets. Now these lines are too straight so we will add some brilliant noise to make the temperature slightly more varied. And finally I made the temperature drop off with altitude. Now for precipitation. As you can see, Earth is generally very humid near the equator, and this value then drops off rapidly to create deserts, after which it gradually goes back up. After a lot of playing around, and some help from my friend ChatGPT, I made a function which shows this. I can now adjust where the dip, aka the deserts are, and how quickly the precipitation goes back up after that. So here we have that, but the lines are a bit too straight. 
we can finally get to assigning the biomes. I'm going to make a biome map with our two parameters and put each biome somewhere on this map. For example, deserts are very warm and dry, whereas tropical rainforests are warm and wet. Now that the biomap is done, each point on our planet has a certain temperature and precipitation value. So I just find the closest biome to those values and that is our biome. There we go, we can see some rainforests and deserts near the equator and some polar regions further out. Now we just assign these biome colors to the parts that used to be green on our planet and we've got ourselves a nice Earth-like planet. As a final small addition, I made it so that the water freezes if the temperature gets too low and now we have some nice natural looking poles. In the next video I'm going to add a player that can walk on our planet, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that. But that's enough talking for today, I'm going to let you enjoy these little planets, until next time.